So today what I want to do is a bit of an exploration of how we can run tests in parallel with Cucumber and Serenity. And I'm going to be using Browser Stack. Uh, now Browser Stack is one of several tools that we can use uh, online uh, to scale our tests and run tests in uh, if you don't want to set up your own Selenium grid and maintain your own machines. Uh, tools like Browser Stack are quite convenient because they do allow you to uh, scale your ramp up your tests. Of course there's a price uh, but often teams find it's easier to use uh, a service like Browser Stack. There's also Source Labs and Lambda Test uh, which are similar services, uh, which let you really ramp up your test to very, to very high levels of uh, parallel execution and also be able to run them on different devices and different environments without having the hassle of setting everything up. So that's what I want to sort of have a look at today because there are some features in Cucumber, the latest version of Cucumber, which we can take advantage of to really get the most out of our sort of test execution. So what I've got here is a literal demo application. That's the application against that runs against this website. Uh, it's a demo website, so it's quite a simple one. And we have a few scenarios that exercise this website, that check the menu, that uh, uh, pick an item in the... Uh, uh, in the catalog that add it to the cart, wait for the spinner to disappear, check the contents of the cart, and a few things like that. So if we look at the scenarios, <coughs> and there are a few interesting things here. Uh, we've got the uh, a few simple scenarios like this, or a rule with a couple of scenarios. We've also got some navigation rules, so Olivia views all the main categories. So these are all the main categories you can view. And for each category, we can see a subcategory. So this is a scenario outline, which obviously means that there are actually four categories here. And same here, we've got four categories. So we've actually got uh, nine scenarios in all in this feature file. This one has two. And this one has, uh, well, three. And so if we run this, not, if we run this without running it in parallel, it takes about three, three four minutes to run. Uh, but what I've done is I've set this up so we can run it in parallel. And the way I've done that is by defining using the suite annotation. So this is JUnit 5. It's all coming from uh, org platform JUnit 5. Uh, suite, we include the Cucumber engine because it's a Cucumber test and we get the feature files from the feature directories. That's all we need to do here. But then we need to configure the JUnit platform. So this is all a little bit of magic. It's sort of defined in the JUnit documentation if you look well enough, but there are a few tricks. So to run your test in parallel, well, the first thing you need is this uh, Cucumber plugin pointing to IO Cucumber Core Serenity Reporter Parallel. That's what does the magic and allows the Serenity reports to run in parallel. Then we have two other parameters which are really important. The, uh, well, and parallel enabled, otherwise nothing will work. Fixed means you're running with a fixed number of threads at the same time, which is useful if you, when you're running, if you run too many threads in parallel, it can overload your own machine or it can overload the server that you're, uh, you can just have too many servers, too many tests, uh, backlogging and getting going and queuing on the server. So you don't really want that. Uh, so I've set this to five, well, so we can run par up to five tests in parallel. And then to run this at the moment, I've just got it running locally. So I'm using uh, Serenity's environment so I can define different configurations and different environments uh, for different situations. So what I've done here is I've defined a local environment 
where uh, we define all the web tests, the web driver configuration. I want to run with Chrome. I've got all these Google options. Uh, I'm running with a particular window size uh, in a incognito mode. Nothing very fancy here, so that's fairly standard type options. I'm running in headless mode. Headless mode here is a shortcut. It will actually add a property to the web driver capabilities. Uh, it's, it's a shortcut. It's convenient. Uh, I've here where where we'll be running with them with full screenshots, which can slow things down a little bit potentially. Uh, you've got to be a little bit careful of that, uh, but it does give nicer reports. So let's run this uh, and we'll watch what happens. So what we notice is that when it kicks off, we're running the cucumber test, but you can see here it actually show you can see what's running in parallel. So we've got all these tests. Uh, so we've got a few here, a few here running in parallel. Uh, one example. So it's basically picking five, uh, five tests randomly, more or less randomly, and running them in parallel. Uh, you've all seen what Sele how Selenium works, so you know that it would pop up browsers if we uh, had set it to, to not headless mode. So uh, here I'm just sort of running it in headless mode so it can, uh, won't interfere with, the, uh, with showing the test execution. Uh, so we're already up to eight. Uh, now remember, well, I didn't demo it because I didn't want to waste your time, but uh, it's like four minutes, little under four minutes to run them sequentially. And so running in parallel, uh, we're finished in one minute, 32 seconds. So it is quite a substantial gain. So that's running them in parallel locally. The problem with running them in parallel locally is you will run out of steam after a while, depending on how powerful your machine is. And uh, opening up browsers in parallel, like eight we're not going to get or if we did 10 we wouldn't get twice that speed gain if we, i had 20 it would probably not give um, that much improvement on what we have now to really scale and also to run on different environments that's where we can use things like a selenium grid setup or if we don't want to set that up ourselves we can do it with something like browser stack so where, where's our browser stack window one more option is put everything in container or run several containers. You can use containers as well. That's, uh, of course, that will, containers are nice because they're, they're clean. It's easy to, to set them up or whatnot. And I'll do another session on uh, using Selenium Grid with, uh, with Docker containers. That's on my list of things to look at. Uh, Browser stack or Lambda test or Source Labs or these solutions, the nice thing about them is they're easy. There's, they're very, there's very little to do. But Docker instances are pretty easy too to set up as well. So we'll definitely be looking at that. Uh, so here we have, well, this is a browser stack page. You, if you want to try that yourself, you can, they do give a free trial. Uh, now Serenity has Serenity integrates with uh, Browser Stack, so Browser Stack has given Serenity a bunch of uh, threads, an account with some uh, some threads to play with. We have five potentially five threads, and uh, let's see what it looks like. So this is previous tests. Uh, let's have a go at actually running some. Now the way we set this up with Browser Stack. You, uh, uh, I won't actually show these properly, but you could. There is a, uh, there's somewhere in the page here, I think, uh, somewhere in the uh, user settings where you define where you get a, an API key and a username. And so, what I've done is here. Uh, where you can see we've got a browser stack user variable. There's also, I won't do it here because it's being recorded, but there is a browser stack key as well. So the user, browser stack user and the browser stack key are the two things we need. And I don't like putting them in the conf, 
the uh, Serenity Conf directory uh, folder for fairly obvious security reasons. So that's why they're as an environment variable and you can put them as secrets on Jenkins. So we, we, we'll be doing some more sessions on working with Jenkins and on working with GitHub Actions as well for the CI side of things. But you can very easily set up your environment variables that way. Now, the way I usually work with browser stack is I set up a special environment for browser stack. So I've got local, but we can also say browser stack and then do our own thing here. Now, browser stack in itself, all we need to do is say web driver. That's where our configuration goes. The driver is always remote for, for anything Selenium grid related and the remote URL, I'm just going to copy this from another bit that I had because uh, it's a bit long. So the remote URL, and this is the standard uh, URL, is the uh, made up of the browser stack user and the browser stack key and then this URL. So that will always, that will never change. If you have these variables, it will never change. So that is almost but not quite enough to run. Now, one trick we could do is we could set up all our preferences here, but I like to take advantage of the fact that with Serenity, you can actually stack your environments. And what that means is I can have browser stack, but I can also have another environment that defines uh, my browser conditions. So I can say Windows Chrome, and here I can define a whole lot of capabilities specific to Chrome. So web driver capabilities, these are the W3C capabilities that we define. Browser name is a mandatory one. We need browser name. And then I'm going to copy the Google options because we want to keep them. Don't care so much about the certificates for this particular test. I want the Google ones. But then what I can do is also add a, a B stack options. Now this is a browser stack thing. So in the, the W3C capabilities, it's a hash map. And in the hash map, it has a few mandatory or standard properties like browser name. We, but we also have these optional properties that typically take the form of key colon value of some kind. So Goog colon Chrome options is our Chrome options. B stack options is our browser stack options. And there we can put stuff about the environment we want to run on. So we can specify the OS, the OS version. What version should we run? 11, Windows 11. Then we can specify for the benefit of uh, of browser stack, we pass in the browser name. I'm not 100% sure we need the browser name. I think we will because it feels like it's being duplicated, but it is. Uh, I'm not sure if browser stack will take it from the capa raw capabilities or not. Uh, and we can say the browser version. And there are a heap of other properties we can specify. So now I've defined what Windows looks like. Uh, for this uh, for this environment. We could also do, say, uh, so we've got Windows. We could also do one with Windows, I don't know, Firefox or Mac or something else. So web driver uh, capabilities, browser name equals Firefox. Uh, B stack options. Uh, I'm just going to copy everything except for the browser stuff. So I'm going to change the browser stuff. I don't know what the, from memory, I, there are a whole lot of Google options like this, but uh, for, they're the equivalent for Firefox. So I don't use them very much. I don't use Firefox very much, to be fair. Uh, Firefox. This becomes really interesting if you're doing mobile testing, because with mobile testing, you need heaps of them. Uh, 
So now I've got a few different configurations. I've got browser stack, I've got Windows Chrome, and I've got Windows Firefox. And now the cool thing is, up here I'd set environment equals local. But what I can do is say environment equals uh, browser stack, Windows Chrome. So I can stack the options this way. Might need to put that in quotes, I think. Just wondering if an array would work, but anyway. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it from the command line. I'm going to run Maven verif clean verify, and I'll show you why I'm running clean in a minute, because I want to make sure we start with a totally clean report, because I want to show you something in the reports. So now we're kicking it off. And hopefully we should see some, yes, yeah, so we're seeing this you know, test of our outcome is available. Uh, so that is actually, that's because I'm running on a snapshot version uh, at the moment. Uh, normally what that does is it comes up with this, the name of the test. But you can see it's running five tests in parallel. Uh, now the thing is, when you run them in parallel on, on a remote machine, the actual speed may not be that much faster than when you're running locally if you've got a powerful machine. If you're working on a, a less power, maybe if you're working on a corporate machine, uh, it'll probably be faster, <clears throat> potentially faster on browser stack. If, I've, uh, if you're running on a, a high-end personal laptop, then it may not be. Uh, but what you do get is basically uh, infinite scaling. So I've got five here that I'm running. I could have run 10 or 20 or uh, as many as I want in parallel. So you can really ramp up, scale this to quite a large degree. Uh, so another nice thing is that it does record the, uh, the session. So you can actually see what it did. So yep, yeah, so it's all, all, all of those tests are finished. Uh, so we can actually watch what it uh, play through and watch what it did. It's a bit of a boring test, but uh, it gives you the idea. So back in our code, yep, so that all ran about the same time, 1 minute 30, which is not too bad. Uh, so it's actually comparable to a high-end Mac, which is pretty good. Uh, but now we're going to show you something else. If I were to say, instead of browser stack Chrome, I'm going to run this with browser stack Firefox. And I'm not going to do a clean, I'm just going to do verify. So browser stack actually has this uh, YAML file that you can configure to configure multiple environments. And uh, one of the things that on the uh, list of future features of Serenity is to integrate with that so that we can run parallel environments at the same time. But what we're doing at the moment is I've kicked off another set of tests, but we're running against uh, Firefox instead of uh, Chrome. So we can see all our tests running, uh, running in parallel against Firefox. And the nice thing here is we can, in our uh, Serenity reports, we'll also get some reporting about uh, about which environments uh, got executed. So let's wait for that to finish. While it's running in the sort of few, the probably one minute or so left, are there any questions before it finishes running? Mm -hmm. Just, uh, can we run uh, like in parallel the Windows uh, Firefox to Windows Chrome? Can you run what? Sorry. In parallel, or like sequential, or like both configuration, the Firefox and the Chrome. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Not at the moment. Uh, that's tricky to do for technical reasons. That's, that's why I'm running them uh, sequentially. But like I said. The goal is that we want to integrate Serenity and uh, the browser with the browser stack YAML configuration file, so we could just do we could do that run them because there's 
no technical reason why we can't. It's just that the well, there is cucumber runners only run in uh, what they have in the in the features. So the cucumber runner doesn't know about those configurations. So the trick is to make the cucumber run it, runner aware of it. So that's the the constraint. So what I'm going to do is what I wanted to show you is the uh, the reports. So remember there were 14 tests, but when we produce our reports, uh, we get all 28 because we ran for both environments. And if we have a look at the actual test uh, results, we can say here there's a little configuration thing in context. So Chrome Windows, Firefox Windows, and so forth. Uh, if we go down here, we can see the different variations. So we can look at all the Firefox Windows uh, tests, or we can look at all the Chrome tests and so forth. Uh, if we go into the details, we can also uh, see those details here where we have the, uh, uh, the icons and whatnot. So uh, the thing I like about being able to run these tests in in these sort of multiple environments uh, is the scalability. I find it, it is actually so if on Windows uh, on web applications. It's to limit. It's useful to some extent, though. To be fair, I did find some bugs on uh, on Safari with this particular application this way. Uh, so cross-browser testing is still relevant, but I find it's less relevant with all the modern frameworks. It's less, uh, doesn't apply as much as it used to. Uh, mobile apps, on the other hand, uh, mobile apps is a big thing because that is uh, the differences in different devices and different configurations is huge. Uh, and so it is important to be able to test things. And if you... Uh, build your mobile app in a way that, or even your web app, but in mobile mode, and you build it in a way that the buttons don't display correctly on a certain uh, device, then you can get into trouble. So uh, I find this approach really useful for mobile testing in particular. But yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to uh, go through today. Just a quick presentation of how to run tests in parallel uh, with Cucumber and Serenity, and then a little demo of how we can use this multiple environment thing uh, with Browser Stack.